I have a skin fashion. I am so sick of wearing a face mask that I just go everywhere I can without wearing one now. Oh my gosh. Is I it, know. Is it just me or is a face mask the new bra where the minute you get home, you're just like, oh, thank God. And you take it. I off. know. I know. I'm just like F this thing. And I just rip it off. I just rip it off because I don't even believe in it. I'd rather be like Corona. Take me now. No, I want you to wear your mask. Don't listen to her, people. <laughs> don't listen to her. All right. On with the show. Oh. <laughs> I'm Sybil Solon. I'm an esthetician and spa owner. And hi, I'm Alex Ellis. I'm a body nerd and wellness expert, and we are business besties. And bosses. Running your own business, it's hard. But we're terrible employees, so we're figuring it out. I've already figured it out, but we promise to share everything we know about making six figures. And be brutally honest about what works and what totally sucks. I'll be honest, a bunch of it totally sucks, but let's get started. Yes, a bunch of it does suck, like wearing a face mask. I can even feel the dryness around my face from how sweaty I got on a dog walk earlier. <laughs> but welcome back to Confessional. On today's show, we are talking about how to deal with overwhelm um, and also how to get real with all the people that you need to in this very interesting and novel time, you know, like your landlord. Yeah. And how it's okay to just do nothing right now. That's all right. Give yourself permission. Do nothing. Yes, 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 yes. And before we dive into that, because I know that so many of us are feeling um, just weird. I mean, that's like the only way I can describe it. Um, but I saw this quote. It was going around on Instagram. And you're not working from home. You're at home during a crisis trying to work. Yeah. I feel like that really kind of frames what it's like where we're at right now in this moment. Yeah. And um, also I had shared yesterday and I wanted to make sure that I talked about that, that, that you might be going through trauma and we have to remember that this is a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And so allow yourself to move through those phases and don't feel like you have to be super effing productive because we keep forgetting that we are dealing with like some horrifying crap. Dude, that like <laughs> hits me right here because I've been thinking for myself too. Like, I know we've talked about this before. Like, my routine and schedule hasn't changed a ton because I was already working from home a lot. Um, but even I am like, oh, well, you could just work on Saturday and you could work on Sunday and like nothing really matters. And you, I mean, you got to be creaking out all this stuff and you have all these things to do. And it's just like, yeah, but also the world is like imploding. And there's feelings that come with that too. And like leaving space to feel all the feels and be in that space as well is really important. Right. I think also there's all this pressure because, okay, you and I, Alex, we are on, we are online a lot and we are, we do, you do the lives and like, you know, we, we both do the things where we do the lives and we do the live streams and we, we do the podcast. We are on social a lot. We are committed to social. It's my third um, of the day, actually. <laughs> right. So, um, I have never seen this many people. It is like the 405 freeway right now, which if you're not from LA, you don't understand, but it's bumper to bumper traffic. It's like, uh, uh, uh. it's like the 405 freeway right now on mm -hmm. social. Mm -hmm. I, like right now, if I went on my Instagram, I'm going to look and there's going to be seven people live streaming yeah, right now. There's a lot. Well, and I think too, that's part of the people who are just scrambling and trying to just, you know, show up for the people and do what they can. Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about this too, in fitness spaces, as far as like giving stuff away for free. Um, and I, I, like, I get it. People are just, they're trying to do what they can, but there's one thing that definitely like not only the 405, but dilutes the market. And like, you don't have to give stuff away for free to be valuable in the marketplace right now. Yes, uh, that is 100% true. Um, and I, I have found that I think that because there is all this stuff in the feeds, like I even see it, like I posted a couple of days ago where I was like, I feel so overwhelmed. And when I talk to other people about like, hey, what should we be doing the show about? So that we stay topical. People were like, oh, you know, I'm super overwhelmed. I, I feel that everything's coming down upon me and I'm supposed to be doing all this stuff. And really, I just want to sit and eat potato chips and watch Netflix and maybe not even do that. Maybe just stay in bed and, you know, do nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, no, I get that. Um, and I think one of the things is like, there are all these classes that you should be taking and you should be doing your website and you should be updating your portfolio and maybe you should be switching your careers and maybe you should be moving and oh, you know, monetizing this. your new face mask making hobby. Right. Mm -hmm. Like all this stuff, like all these things that all these ideas that are coming at you. And also I think we've had 
a moment to sit around and think differently, think like laterally. Mm -hmm. So it's been all this creative stuff is happening at the same time, but like we don't have per se the energy to be doing anything with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point about the energy because I think too, there's like, this feeling like you just want to be like, everything's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're fine. You're fine. We're all fine. And on some level, like that's true a bit, but also acknowledging like we're not fine. And that also is okay. That we have entered into the new normal, you know, and this is something you and I have been talking about for weeks now of just Mm -hmm. like, no, no, no. Like once we cross that threshold, there's no going back. There will always be the time before <clears throat> Corona, that's not the Rona, um, and the time after, you know, and like, th- it's not going back. Like, this is, this is what it is now. And just like finding ways to be okay, which doesn't even feel like the right way to describe it, you know? No, to being, yeah, it's not being okay. It's just being, um, I'm going to say it, it's being present during it. Mm-mm. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you can just being existing in this new reality that we have. Do you need a lozenge? I have these amazing lozenges. I wish. No, so I made um, this smooth. Wait, hold on. Wait, I'm gonna step away. <laughs> and everyone's like, I can't, I can't hear it because speaking of all it. the things, I I have these new lozenges. They're silver. They have silver in them. They boost your immune system. You can get them on the Your Skin Fitness Expert Store. Okay. Well, there you have it. We'll link to it in the show notes. <laughs> They're I pretty amazing. It's like, oh, <clears throat> this orange creamsicle <laughs> smoothie is just getting me right now. Um, you know, one practice that I uh, have been thinking about and was inspired by uh, Rachel Hollis is doing the next 90 day challenge and new lessons every week. And the lesson this week was about joy. And she talked about uh, creating a joy list. And so spending some time thinking about the things that bring you joy um, and they might not be things that you can actually do right now. Like Mm. literally sitting on a beach, reading a book in the sun, fully covered is like definitely something that brings me joy. Can't do it right now, but there's elements of it that I can do. Right. So that's an important Mm. distinction. Um, And so having this list and just making a point of it to do at least one thing a day that brings you joy. And I realized that I've been doing this, but like not consciously. Um, so for me, it's a long walk to like end my work day with my husband and my dog. It's uh, putting on music to dance to while I cook dinner in the kitchen, like little things like that. That is not even like about normal or not normal or routine or this. It's just things that I know make me feel good and elevate my energy and my spirits and that you can pick and choose from at any time. Um, so five stars, totally recommend just sitting down, making a list and then committing to trying one every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I will say to note them and actually like be present during it mm-hmm. to appreciate it because a lot of times we'll do something and we won't be realizing that it, like we're self-soothing and it's almost like when you like eat something, the first bite is amazing. And then you don't realize the rest of it was good, you right. know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I, I'll find that for me, I have to really like, so today I made waffles uh-huh. and I like actually, like I actually made the waffles and I experienced making the waffles and I enjoyed the waffles because I'm like, I need to do something today that is just like normal and for myself and has nothing to do with work. And if I was going to the spa today, I would have been like, in the morning, I'm going to pre-prep food and I'm just going to have a really nice meal. And that's that. And that's what I would do. And so I just tried to bring some normalcy to my life. Yeah. And I do, I think that self-soothing thing is important to be aware of because, um, just like that first bite of dessert tastes good. Um, you know, I've been soothing too with a lot of cake and wine. Um, but it's also like, it's all just choices, which is something I learned from you, um, to, you know, whatever decisions you decide to make, it's all just choices and to not beat yourself up about whatever choices you have made or are making, um, and just be present in that moment and just be there. Like, that's something for sure. Like, if you have pets around the house, like, they are so good about being right in that moment to the point where it's like, hey, it's 430. It's dinner time, right? That's what happens right now. You know, they're not worried about what am I going to eat for breakfast tomorrow or or, um, that walk that we took four hours ago. I didn't get to get to that squirrel. Like, they're not worried about that. And so the more you can be like your pet and in the moment, like, it just it makes things 
more tolerable, we'll say. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, This this is a time for definitely for us to sit around and try to find those moments and enjoy the the few moments that we can find in our life. Um, I do like the idea of thinking like our pet. So what, what, what would our pet do? Yeah. Hashtag be like Freya. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. She's so crazy. My cat Freya, by the way, is insane. She's not. I mean, she's pretty funny. She's full of of, a verve. We'll (laughs) say your face right now. (laughs) Yeah. She's full of verve. That's correct. She's full of verve. Um, So I think the other thing with the overwhelm that I know that a lot of people are experienced experiencing is also um, a lot of people are like, well, I feel like I need to be super productive right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so one of the things that I know that I talked to people about when they were like, I want to be productive was that they want to do all these new things right? and it, it's hard to do new things. So Alex, you had said when we first were talking about this, that you were like, um, I'm not doing any of that. So you had all the stuff that was coming at you and you're like, oh, nah, swipe, swipe, swipe. There's just too much. And also like. I mean, I say this with a grain of salt, too, because I I, I'm selling right now. Like I'm a part of that as well. And I'm being conscious to pivot to some degree. Um, But like, I don't need to know about copywriting right now or how to make the best Canva ebook or how to start your website. Like, I'm just I don't need to learn new stuff right now. Personally, is how I feel because I'm doing enough stuff as it is. And so also, like, if you are feeling really overwhelmed right now, like you don't need to add more fuel to the fire as far as overwhelm goes, because probably like both of us have done, there's a bajillion courses sitting in your inbox right now that you haven't even opened. What about those? Yes. And so I know that for me, I was like, I have like three courses that I kind of maybe I didn't finish all the way or maybe I kind of half asked a bunch um, or maybe I just need to revisit because I I, I, I'm in a different space now in my business, my career, I need to look at them with a different kind of like scope. Uh, mm-hmm. so you can go back to it. Um, also one of the things I have talked to a couple people about is, you know, people are taking a lot of classes that they're like, Oh, but I really want to take this class on, you know, like flow method or nothing wrong with that, by the way, but flow method or acupressure or whatever. But we also have to remember that this new reality that we're in, you might not be getting to use that. And so we, we want to like make sure that some of the things that you're taking classes on, if you're taking it for yourself, that's great. If you're taking it because you're planning on using it on people, that might not be something you're going to be hands on doing. I don't know. Maybe you will. But do think about things that you're investing in that can be used at a distance as well as hands on. Mm hmm. Because at least for the next year, we may not be touching as many people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and that's mad only because so far you have been right about everything. And I'm just like, dang it. She has said it. And so it will be. (laughs) So, and and I know it's hard and like, these are the things that I just have thought about. And so it fucking sucks everyone. And I know, but it's like, this is the potential future. And I'm not saying that we're not going to touch people because people need touch and people like touch and people are going to want touch, but Mm -hmm. things are going to shift a little bit. And I think at least for a year, we're going to have times where people are not going to be like, okay with touch. And we're going to have some touching problems and we're going to have new laws and stuff coming about for touch. Okay. And so there's going to be some stuff where we're going to need some alternates. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are things when you're thinking about what you're doing and you're spending money on. Yeah. And actually, so I am signed up for a course. I'm going to be full disclosure here. Um, It was a beta test of a free one. And I was like, cool, this is absolutely something. It was about um, batching content on social media. So Mm. because it's something I do, I'm curious about refining. I knew that it wouldn't be overwhelming because it wouldn't be fully new material for me. Um, And it was an opportunity to help a fellow entrepreneur refine her offering. And she wants feedback. So I was like, cool. Yeah, I'm in. Um, and then another thing I'm doing, and maybe this is something to consider as far as like, if I have money and I can spend it, 
a lot of people um, and companies who have done only live events are now pivoting to do virtual events. And part of that, because now the accessibility is way larger, the cost and price to get in is much lower. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm sort of on a Rachel Hollis kick right now. I really want to go to one of her uh, conferences. Now that's not going to happen, but she's doing a virtual one. So I was like, cool, I'm totally going to sign up for this. And it's $40 instead of $300. Magic. Yeah. So I think there's, and that for me, like that event is purely for me. Right. And so I think that's important too, is like, if you are going to invest in something right now, because we don't know what the future holds and there's no point in getting stressed out about it, right? Be like your pet, um, hashtag be like Ella, be like Freya, be like Sage, (laughs) be like Mr. Kitty. Um, don't invest in things that aren't a sure bet you, your well being, your health, um, your enjoyment, like those are a sure bet. So, I mean, if you're going to spend money and you are concerned and making sure and tracking every dollar and cent right now, maybe invest in you instead of a skill you might or might not use. This is why we keep Alex around because she has all the knowledge. <laughs> she really does. So I keep Alex around because she <laughs> keeps us grounded. She's the soul of Skin Fashional. Where I sit around being like, do these things, guys, because this is what you should do. Alex is like, but listen to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we keep her around because yeah. she's so incredibly good at those things and teaches me all the wise ways. <laughs> so I do what I can. This is an important reminder that, you know. If you, if you have something that's like, is your soul is it's calling to you, then do it, dude, do it. It does. Sometimes you don't make decisions with this. You do make decisions with this. Like I might be like, Hey, look at your investment in that, you know, $40 is a different investment than $2,000 on something. Yeah, for sure. You know, at a time that maybe you don't have a bunch of cash sitting around, but at the same time, you have the time also to invest. So you might never have that time again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, I know for me, I have so much time right now and I haven't had time in like 15 years. And how do you feel like, I mean, back to this productivity, like how do you, how do you feel you're spending your time? Well, I have actually been doing a bunch of like, I've been doing a bunch of stuff. I've been knocking crap off of my list, not maybe in the most productive like order because I definitely have had a lot of overwhelm. Um, but I have been knocking a bunch of stuff off my list and Nils is on vacation starting next week. Cause we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be cruising Tahiti, which okay. we will not. Uh, so, so he still gets is- to take his vacation. Yeah, he's still taking his vacation. Mm. Um, so he created a Kanban board, which if you guys aren't geeks and don't know what that is, essentially it's a board where it's like, here's a bunch of crap that you're going to do and here's, and we're going to knock it off together. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've Trello created, board. yeah, it's Trello board. So we've created a Kanban board and it has things like, you know, figure out here's this, this guide and here's every little thing in it and get that, get that shit sorted. And here's this other thing and get that shit sorted. So things like the brow guide, the lip guide, this, you know, the skin, the skin group, the, all the things, every little piece on it that I'm like, well, I stopped here because I couldn't figure out how to make the drip campaign work. And I stopped here because I couldn't get the C name to function. And I couldn't head up here because wait, wait, wait. Nils is on vacation, except he'll be working just for you. Oh yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was envisioning like staying at home and like doing fun stuff. And- no, no. Well, fun stuff for us is like geeking out on tech stuff that yeah, I yeah. can't seem to sort out by myself. No, I know. Um, yeah. So last time we migrated, last time he was on vacation, we migrated over from Mind Body Online to Shopify. I remember. Yeah. So and then I'm figuring out how to integrate Shopify into all of the networks, like it, because it goes into Amazon stores, it goes into Instagram stores. It, so I've been reading about how Shopify in, like goes into everything, oh. and I'm figuring out. So this is something everyone I'm talking about. So everyone out there, everybody's drop shipping, everybody's drop shipping stuff, and this is actually where, the, and this has been the future for a long time. That now because of COVID everyone else understands. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to spend time personally, if you're going to spend time doing anything, start calling up your manufacturers or dropping them emails and find out who's drop shipping and how drop shipping works because that's your future. I'm nodding my head here. Yeah. That's your future. Even if you're making only a tiny profit on that, that's actually your future. As somebody who has inventory sitting here behind me, um, a thousand percent. Yeah. 
And um, Jane Iredell just reached out to me to tell me that they're now drop shipping. Yeah. And they have not wanted to drop ship forever. Like yeah. I had, I went to Iredell and had a conversation with them. They're like, no, we're not doing it. It's not ever going to happen. Shh, get away from us. And they went, they dropped an email to me yesterday saying like, Hey, so we're drop shipping. See, and that's also like part of the silver lining. I feel like for this, like, yes, it's shitty. Things are really awful. But there's like these little glimmers that come up every once in a while that you're like, oh, wait, but like, that's really cool. Let me take advantage of that. That's something that people thought previously was like not possible. And now they're being forced to think more creatively and like move mountains and make stuff happen. That's awesome. I know. And so now it's just a matter of figuring out like if we how to set up how to set up drop shipping for you and your business to make it function and then we all just if everyone does this guys if everybody just makes this happen and function it becomes the new normal and then they stick to it yeah and yeah. i will say as a consumer <laughs> that's my job here um so i have been consciously trying to shop less on Amazon. And we've been talking about this. Yeah. It's nearly impossible, but also a huge motivation is like their shipping time right now. Like I needed to order some shipping supplies. They're like a month out because they're only shipping like priority stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, as a consumer, I'm preferring to go directly to the company and literally like I paid $6 shipping. I can't even tell you the last time I paid for shipping, but only because I was like, well, I know that I'm going to get it faster from them. So right now is a great time because I think people are also more willing to buy directly from small businesses, um, you know, not from Amazon, basically. Right. Because their shipping is so like out of control, you know? Right. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Um, and, you know, sometimes we've had many conversations, you and I, about the cost of doing business. Yeah. Keep the shipping because it's the cost of doing business. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is that world. Like I, I have, I ship. I pay for shipping. Everything is free shipping, you know, and it's just the cost of doing business. Well, and what I learned from you, um, just mark up your prices enough to cover your shipping. Yeah, that's correct. You know, or, and if some, you know, I, my minimum is, uh, $59 because that is the, that is the least expensive thing on my site that is like worth shipping. So if somebody orders a chapstick, yes, you're going to pay for shipping, but it's like $2 for you for them to ship it. Right. Right. But my cleanser, I have to charge, you know, it cost me $8, seven to $8 to ship it. Shipping is expensive. Shipping is expensive, guys. Yeah. Like even um, a small package that you would get and you're just like, oh, cool. Um, is already like eight, nine dollars bigger ones. I mean, like it's not what it used. It's not the Pony Express. So, you know, pay your small businesses, mark up your products if you're doing drop shipping to make sure that you cover your your you know, shipping costs so that you can't include it. Cause there's definitely a psychological factor of like, I had so much stuff in my cart last night. Cause I was like, Oh, but free shipping. And then I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you're about to spend 30 more dollars just to save $6. This does not make sense. Like put it all back. Just get what right. you need. But it is yeah. a psychological. psychological. It is psychological uh, with shipping. Um, and I will say, so for me, usually I ship all of my things, signature deliver upon delivery. Mm-hmm. I have not been cause a hey, y'all home. And if right. the postman says you're not home, he's lying. So lying, so lying, <laughs> right? Also, I don't want to, anybody has to have to go out and like go pick it up at the post office. Yeah. So I was the one time I am not, but I do usually ship signature delivery because that does make it a little safeguards it a bit. Um, and as a shipper too, for new shippers, I'll add um, priority mail also. But sometimes that can be more expensive, but then you get tracking because I've had clients come back and be like, oh, I never got it. And then you can pull up the tracking number like, well, here it is. It's waiting for you here or there or wherever. But right. know also that shipping... It's just, you know, it's not actually tracking priority. So it's just if it was really delivered, whereas signature delivery actually is tracking. Oh, good to know. What I was also going to say is that shipping is just like, imagine like, you know, a dandelion and like you blow all the seeds off it and they just go wherever. That's sort of how shipping is. It probably is going to get there, but it probably won't. So like, don't just expect it not to get there and be genuinely surprised when it does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Though I will say as somebody who ships a freaking ton of stuff, I've been shipping for, oh, we can have a conversation about shipping for like a year. Yeah. I've shipped a ton of stuff in general. Um, one out of 10 packages does not make it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, if I do signature on delivery, more of them make it than not. And 100%, I try not to ship during Christmas. 
Yeah. <laughs> so if I can help it, I try to just ship during Christmas because way less of them will arrive. Uh, like, and I do always send um, during Christmas if I am shipping, I do send in the flat rate boxes because they have more opportunities to actually make it. Yeah. 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 Well, also let us know if you want to talk more about shipping because <laughs> clearly we can go for hours. <laughs> we um, can have a full option conversation. Let's talk about other things too that you could you could be doing with your time. And one of those is taxes. Um, um, which yeah. I haven't done because you don't have to. But it's on my list and I have very Alex like scheduled out three hours, blocked out three hours every single day during my vacation time to work on taxes to do my taxes. And so that's usually the amount of time it takes me to do my taxes. Uh, it usually takes me that many hours in a two week period to get them all like done and put together for my person to file. So I have another question yeah. where my brain is going. Could you spread that out over the year so you don't have to do it right before? Time? I mean, I always try to do that. But then like what happens is I look at the pile and I'm like, I mean, it's horrible and I hate doing it. Yeah, no. I put a, a money date with myself in my calendar every two weeks and move it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if somebody out there has a really good suggestion about forcing yourself to do this. OK, so has anybody ever seen the movie? Um, so it's about like there's this one little vignette in it where they're trying to stop smoking. It's a Stephen King novel, by the way, and right. it's about one trying to stop time. smoking. And literally, because you dropped out, I of the cat, I of the, I have the cat. cat. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have a cut and it's a Stephen King book and it's made, made it into a movie. And there's a part in it where spoilers, they're trying to stop people from smoking. And the next level to stop people from smoking is literally they cut off, not your finger, but like a loved one's finger. Oh my God. Right. And I always think to myself, I mean, maybe that's the only way I'd get my taxes done. Cut my finger <laughs> <It's> like, <off. laughs> like, like something I super care about. Cause even mine, I'd be like, I mean, do I really need that finger? <laughs> I can be an esthetician with my last finger. I mean, I guess you could do 10 years before it really becomes a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how much I freaking hate doing them. That's how much uh, I hate doing them. Uh, I, I, and I, if I really want somebody else, I could, I wish I could pay somebody to do them. I mean, like, you can, there's always a way to do it, but there's always going to be, here's the thing too about outsourcing. You have to, you have to look over them yourself. Right. But there's, there's always gonna be some amount of work for you. So there's no way to like outsource it. In All of it. It's yeah. Possible. Yeah. Cause I had an assistant who did them for one period of time and she was great and she did them, but I always had to still go through them. Yeah. 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 It makes me want to die. So taxes guys, taxes. you can be doing your taxes right now. I mean, it will be less horrible than COVID maybe. I don't know. Questionable. Yeah. Questionable. Yeah, questionable. <laughs> questionable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Speaking about horrible things. Talking to your landlord. Talking to your landlord. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So let's talk about things that you could or could not be overwhelmed by. So I, one of the things I think that people need to be thinking about and doing right now is you need to be talking to your landlord. Yep. If you have not had a hard conversation about the price that you're paying, how you're paying, for your lease and your, your kind of your space, you need to have a conversation. So if you're like a person who's just like, I mean, my space is fine and I don't mind paying for it, whatever. Awesome. Then you can just be like, what? Tune this part out. But most of us, I think are sitting around being like, Oh my God, I'm paying for a space. That's way too expensive right now for the money, money that I'm making, which is pretty much almost nothing. So you need to have a conversation and it's not their responsibility to reach out to you. No, nope. they, they don't care. You're like a squeaky wheel. If you if your tire ain't flat, they're not. You're not going to fix it. You're not even well, going to think about your tires. Yeah, you're also one of how many? Oh, a bunch, and they don't care. They don't care about you. You're not important to them, except that for money that you're, they're making off of you. It's heartbreakingly true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Your job is to reach out to them however you do that, okay? So if it's an online system, if it's in writing, if it's a phone call, if it's a text, I prefer that it be in writing some way, mm-hmm. that way that you can say that you reached out to them, all yeah. right? And reach out to them until they get back to you. Mm-hmm. So every three to four days, reach out to them saying, hey, I know that I've written you already, but I need you to have a conversation with me in regards to, and be very specific. Don't be like, I need to talk to you about my rent. Be like, hey, I can't afford my rent. I will be broke by this date. We need to have a conversation about, I was like, I need to renegotiate my lease. By May 1st, I will not have money to pay you. Mm -hmm. Two things will happen. Either I will move out 
or I will renegotiate my lease. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. You say what you need to say. I contacted my person twice before they got back to me. We are now kind of like quiet negotiations, but this is what you need to do. And if they refuse to negotiate with you, you're in a hard, it's a hard position. So I had a conversation with my lawyer today and essentially my lawyer is like, you kind of don't have a place to stand. If it's a commercial real estate place, uh, you are required by law to pay for your space. And if you leave and break your lease, at least in California, yeah. you yeah, you have to pay for all of it when you leave and potentially for breaking your lease. Um, they can take you to court. So yeah, right now you don't have to pay for it because the government is not making you pay, but you will owe that money. So it's better to, to go to them proactively and be like, Hey, I need to talk to you about my lease. Okay. I know it's overwhelming, but this is what you have to do. You and they have the scary position. conversations. Yeah. And they're in a position right now where they really need to have a conversation with you because nobody's going to rent this space. If you go out of business, Mm-mm. this is, this is a bad time for business for they, everybody. They're trying to pay yeah. mortgages too. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're not, I don't think they're trying to be dicks. I think they're just being like very, as my one friend said, I think they're just being very heads in the sands about this. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, they're just like, what? I mean, everything's going to be fine. Right. Yeah. About that. But I definitely think an open line of communication and just like starting that conversation, following up. I know um, it's different residential, but like we sent an email to our landlord back in um, like the minute we went on shutdown and everything started closing down. Hey, can we talk about rent? Like, you know, our income is severely impacted. We need to have a conversation. Didn't hear back from him. So followed up with a phone call and he agreed to something that was super workable for all parties involved. But starting that conversation and not waiting and like like you're saying like heads in the sand this isn't the time because like just like put on your big girl pants or your big boy pants and just deal with it because the sooner you deal with it the faster it will be done with and you can put it away you know yeah no it's and it's hard and if you're like i said if you're a person where this is not a problem and you're like this is great i more power to you mm-hmm. i have a successful business and i have to have this conversation because right now i am not having a successful business yeah Right. Okay. All right, guys. So that one, that, that conversation is now done. I'm sorry that we've had to have it, but it was a good combo. Well, and whoever else too, that you need to speak with, whether it's loan people, student loans, credit card companies, you know, whoever it is, just like make the calls because there's nothing to be gained from not making the call. Yeah. And once you have, once you have one or two of these, they get easier. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, all right. And then, oh, so let's talk about the overall feelings of like why people are just kind of like having the overwhelm and kind of feeling the dread. And I don't know. I think, I think a lot of people right now are having a lot more anxiety and stress than they were having maybe even just like a week ago, which is funny because a week ago is when everybody's rent and stuff was due. Like bills are due, rent was due. Right. Um, but I, I wasn't hearing as much like trauma and stress. Well, because they were only talking about the money we're supposed to get in the stimulus package. Right. And where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. Seriously. Nope. No, no, there's, there's no money. money. There's no money. There's no money. There's no money. I mean, there uh, is money, but they're like, I love this. Oh, we didn't realize so many people would be interested in the money. And I'm just what? like, are you kidding me? Like all of America is not working right now. Yeah. Except for Alex. Alex is 100% working. She's doing awesome. It's, I'm so excited. Thank you. My boyfriend's you- working as well. He's doing fine. So, I mean, there is a percentage of America that's super doing amazing. And that's, I mean, that's great. You know, it's interesting too. I, was, I think it was in the countrywide. It's only like 11% of people have filed for unemployment. But I feel like that can't be right because I don't know about the self-employed people. Um, and also, it's not just like unemployment. They went from like, okay, to zero. 
in the course of like 10 days, which to me seems, and also if like you see the graph, it's like, you know, here's unemployment, 2020, bring, it springs up like a thousand times what it has been before. Right. Well, I mean, I know that because I mean, and if you're listening to this and you have not, and you're a solo entrepreneur and you are unemployed, you can file for unemployment. Mm-hmm. So make sure you do that. I have a whole video on Skin Fashion about how to go about that, at least for California, but everywhere you can, you should be able to, mm-hmm. whether we get it or not, it's a whole nother matter, but. <laughs> <laughs> still, still put your fingers in the pot and be like, I'm digging around in there looking uh, because you may never, ever have the opportunity ever again. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. There's so many opportunities from, you know, loans to grants, like all kinds of things are floating around right now. Like might as well take advantage, like at least yeah. ask. Yeah. Cause if you don't ask, you can't get, and I mean, even the loans right now are incredible because at the, the, the small percentage you could even take that money and like pay something else down. Even if you don't need it for your business, you could pay something else down. It can help get you through the year. Cause right now you're like, maybe I don't need it, but this time next year, maybe you do. Yeah. And it might not be available then. Oh, it so won't be. <laughs> I'm always like, take the money when you can. Yeah. Yeah. You take the money when you can. I mean, one of the things I think is really interesting and, and a lot of people don't realize is that if you have, and I know a lot of sole proprietors do not, but we, if you have a 401k, you can borrow from it right now. Right. They're not penalizing you. They're not penalizing. Essentially what you're doing is you're borrowing it. So this is how it works. You borrow from it and then you pay the interest back to yourself. Oh, People don't realize that, that how that, that works. So essentially you're paying interest and it's really low right now. Interest be crazy low, but you're paying, you're not getting a penalty for it. And you're paying interest back over like the, the term of the loan to yourself. So really you're making money to yourself. Oh shoot. For that loan. The penalty is like 10%. Ask me how I know. <laughs> no. But it's, it's a, you can do this in life usually when you buy your first house mm-hmm. and when you're you use it for a student loan okay but you can do it right now so you know hey if you need to do that go ahead and do it and nothing wrong with that guys if you have a 401k yeah um also you you can do that i think for your scp so if there's a lot of sole proprietors who have an scp mm-hmm. find out but i think you can do it for your scp as well also Look, i feel like we should have a conversation about if you don't have either of those, you probably why you don't should start doing that. Right. Yeah, so whole financial so, series where I yeah, ask so you questions. Writers, we cannot have 401ks. We, we don't, we can't set them up, but you can have something called an SEP, which is just like a 401k. You can also do like IRAs, right? An IRA, which is something completely different, which you right. don't borrow money from IRAs. I don't think you can only borrow them from 401ks. I don't know about the borrowing, but you can definitely take money out of an IRA. You can take money out of an IRA. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> you can. How how know. Know. Don't ask how she knows. <laughs> this is a bad idea. <laughs> so that's what you get penalized for. Yeah. Um, but that you don't pay. It. Yeah. So whole other thing. And if you need a help, ask a financial advisor. And if you need a <laughs> clearly don't ask recommendation <laughs> for a financial advisor, I've got a very good one. <laughs> oh, money. You guys, I'm learning. Okay. I'm learning. <laughs> we all learn. We all learn. Listen, we all have it. I have a financial advisor for a reason. He's amazing. Um, okay. So, um, I think that one of the reasons why also we're feeling a bit pinch is because as Alex brought up, it is coming up to Easter time. Yep. And Passover. many of us are used to hanging out with our families and we are about to not be with our families or friends are doing the usual things we're doing. Ramadan is also happening. Yeah. Ramadan oh, and, uh, pa- was it Passover? Passover. Mm-hmm. Passover. Yeah. Good Jew. I'm not a good Jew. Passover. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, which is the one party I usually go to a year is I usually go to Passover. I usually go to a big pa- Passover party where we hang out, even Nils goes. So it, it's one of those things. I think that a lot of people are kind of feeling it. The weather in a lot of the country is kind of bleak. I know they just got snow up north. So, oh gosh. yeah. I Colorado. mean, it's like a another wave of a reminder of how things are not normal right now, which I think is the hardest part. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I also think, so we're going to talk about Tiger King because it's topical. Uh, which, <laughs> why I think people like love the ty- love Tiger King. <laughs> I, I just have to say every single live stream I've done today, I have wanted to start. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. This is Carol Baskin from the Big Cat Rescue. Like literally Facebook lives, Instagram lives. <sighs> you could have started here. You could have literally started with, I have a, I have a confession. 
Are you cool cats and kittens? <laughs> Confession. Are you cool cats and kittens? Hey, wear my face mask. I I a hundred percent did kill my husband. <laughs> Bed him. I'm Bed not him. done yet. Don't tell me. But I didn't watch it at all. I don't know. I know. I just know from the memes. But I, I uh, what was I going to say? I have catchphrase envy. Yeah. Of all of those people on their television shows. And I'm like, all I say is, hey, hey, happy Friday. And that is lame. I need a catchphrase. So I'll be working on that in quarantine. (laughs) (laughs) Well, apparently, according to the people that I did my last training with that I that I taught, not the Russians. Yeah. um, Apparently, I say, um, well, if that's your lifestyle a lot. (laughs) Life choices. I'll be like, if that's your lifestyle, (laughs) that's the lifestyle you're living. (laughs) <laughs> Great choices. Great choices. Good. Those are your choices. So we need Facebook Live catchphrases. Oh, we're working on it, guys. If you hear, if you if you've seen any, let us. I know. am straight up gonna Google how to come up with the best <laughs> catchphrase. For I, I know, guess you, you just uh, step one lessons from Carol is come up with uh, a name for your community. <laughs> Um, and then you just say, Hey, all you, and then some adjective that starts with the same letter as what you call them. There you go. Okay. Well, we'll keep working on that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Keep going as I've derailed us here. I, my, I mean, honestly, part of this episode is to make everybody feel better and just talk about like fun things as well. So I want to make sure that, cause we talked about very heavy crap today and you know, um, I know that for me, I'm watching a bunch of silly stuff and um, reading a bunch of very silly things. Oh, my God. I just feel, finished the book. It was so good. Speaking oh, of not silly oh, things. Oh, <laughs> the book, we'll put it. It's um, The Giver of Stars by oh my God, so Jojo good. Moyes. Banger. Moyes. There you go. Gotta read it. It's so good. It was super good. It was so good. It was so good. Um, another winner that Alex has given me. Well, it's you just need to have friends in book clubs because... Friends in book clubs and then and they pass it along. We totally should. We should totally start this confessional book up. It would be very hodgepodge because we 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 both read a varietal of very unusual things. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> very hodgepodge. Like, and then we read a marketing book, and then we read this other one, and then it was a romance novel, and, and then it was a it murder was, book. Then it was a murder book about about somebody slicing people up and then hiding their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking like, oh, maybe in quarantine, while I'm thinking of my catchphrase, I'll organize my bookshelf by color. That's amazing. Oh my god! By the way, I just thought of like the best book series for you. Hmm. I don't have to make sure I get them to you. Okay, I have to make sure I get those to you. Okay. Um, <laughs> like other things that I'm thinking about. So we did um, point. We talked to our landlords and normal. St- oh, and then just be. F- we want to make sure I'm going to pull down the point that you are allowed to absolutely do nothing. Yep. Watch Tiger King. Yep. Cook. You know, bake cook we're, we're about to make another cake yeah, which i'm yeah. excited to try because i'm out of cake now and i need cake i've been eating the same birthday cake for forever we need mini chocolate chips and then we are in business i have mini chocolate chips we are in business <laughs> i'm like i have mini chocolate chips i have a ton of eggs so i just gave my mom a bunch of eggs so that's good my butter i have eggs i'm ready to rumble i made amazing waffles this morning with spelt flour they were so mm-hmm. good but I think that's also a great point, too. If you want to do nothing, do nothing. Nobody says that you have to be productive. There's no gold star. There's no medal. There's no certificate of completion at the end of this. Like, do you boo whatever it needs to right. be, you know? Right. Or take up something so completely frivolous. Like, be like, like, I wanted to, re- like, Alex is working on mastering TikTok. Well, working on is <laughs> very loose. <laughs> She's, but it's like on her on her list and she's like just slowly working on it that's like one of the small things she's doing um i was like i'm learning how to make cakes mm-hmm. right i mean this has nothing to do with any kind of thing that like is in business it has nothing to do with anything no right? i'm working on my pull-ups too there you go Getting working on your pull-ups and fit <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like i just really wanted to learn how to knit do it mm-hmm you know, I can't wait to learn how to braid. Do that. You know, I want to make the perfect ringlet. Do it. 
Someone, um, I don't know where this was, but just like the comment was, aren't you so glad that this is happening now when we have technology? Can you imagine if this happened in the 80s and there was no social media, there was no YouTube, there was no cell phone, and it'd just be you in your house with 12 television channels? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my God, I'd write so many letters and... By the way, the post office is already crazy, but I'd write so many more letters and I would probably kill my sister (laughs) because in the 80s, I still lived with my sister and we would have killed each other. Tiger King. (laughs) Also, I don't think you would have gotten people to stay home as much. I think people would have just left more. Yeah. They would have been way more sneaking out. (laughs) There would be literally nothing to do at home. And then so many drugs, just so many drugs, just so because of the eighties, just so many drugs and bad hair. Oh God. Well, I definitely hope that, uh, while we did talk on heavy things, we also have brought some levity to your day and you also, all you cool cats and kittens can be laughing along with us. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Hold on. I got to pull up my, um. Um, I'm going to pull it back up my uh, Google Drive here. I'll say the one uh, wellness tip I have for you this week is to make your list of things that bring you joy to doing at least one every day, um, whatever it might be. And maybe it's like petting your cat. Um, maybe, you know, I mean, it could be anything. And your list is not my list. It's not Sybil's list. It's, it's yours. So yeah, share your list, share, share with, share, share, share with us one or two items from your list, because I'm always, I'm always interested in what goes on in people's lists. I'll be like, Oh, that's a good one. I'm stealing it. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So you can send us a DM or you can tag us on Instagram. We are at skin professional. Yeah, and I'm, I'm at your skin, <laughs> your skin fitness expert. Alex is at Hala for Mala. You know it, Hala for Mala. Maybe that should be part of my catchphrase. So many things to think about now. I know. Um, or you can call us at the Skin Fashional voicemail inbox. <laughs> it's a box, girl. It's a box. This is Skin Fashional box. Eight one eight four seven three five two seven seven. We will put that in the description as well. Okay. So So until next week, keep your secrets to yourself. Unless you're telling us. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye.